Widgets and video. When I think of these two types of assets, I think of their relative incompatibility. It's really hard to just add a video to a widget. There's no video component, there's no movie component that you can just plop an MP4 right on top of a widget. We have to do some finagling, and today we're gonna cover two different ways on how to add videos and sort of animations to our widgets. And I'm not thinking of the typical bottom left side of the screen for widgets animation. I'm talking about real videos and animations with transparent backgrounds plopped on top of our widget. So let's get to it and cover those two ways on how to add these to our widgets. Welcome back, all of you beautiful people, to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we're going to cover two quick ways on how to spice up your widgets. So I'm going to open up my main menu level from our survival series, and you don't have to be even working on the survival series to understand what we're going to do in this video since we're just dealing with widgets and we're dealing with animations. But what we've already done so far in the series is in our level blueprint, we have a widget created, we create that widget when we begin play, set it to a variable and add that widget to the viewport, then we set some input modes and play some sounds. In this video, it's pretty simple what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to our main menu widget and this can be any widget that you want it to be and we're just gonna add some custom animations. And there's really two ways to do animation and animated things inside of widgets that come to mind for me. And by animation, I actually mean videos inside of the widget. So that's what we're talking about today. What I'm not talking about are the simple animations here on the bottom left where you would just create a new animation, uh, set a keyframe for, you know, let's say our start button, and then you know, a second later, we're gonna set it in the X position way over here, another keyframe, and when we play that, um, you know, just moves it inside of the widget. I don't want that to be the topic of today. Today we're gonna cover those videos, not traditional widget animations. So let's go ahead and minimize the widget here, and we're gonna create a special folder inside of our content browser. We're not gonna put it in our assets folder, we're gonna put it in our contents browser for a reason. Unreal and Epic Games suggest putting the movies folder inside of the content folder specifically. And that is so that these movies get picked up by all platforms since they're in a very easy to navigate location inside the content folder and into the movies folder right there. Let's go ahead and drag just any sort of MP4 video into our content browser here on the bottom. And once we do that, we'll get something called a file media source. And what we need to do from this point, because if we open it up, we're really just going to get a file path, since this is going to show where the location of the MP4 video is on our computer. It's just a directory for the engine. What we need to do is create an asset in the media type called a media player. And it's going to ask us if we want a texture for this media player. I recommend always creating a texture along with the media player because you really need the texture in order to actually show the video on screen. So go ahead and do that. I'm just going to call this media player um, intro since this is an Eden Sky intro, Eden Sky being the business that I work for. And that's perfect. When we open up this media player, you'll notice that we already have that texture created since we said we do want it created. If for some reason you missed that, you can go back into your media folder, create a media texture, and then inside of that media texture you would link up to your media player here and I'm just gonna delete that really quick. Inside of our media player, we are going to play our video that we want. I don't know if you can actually hear that in the background, but this one has some audio. We're not gonna be playing that audio in the widget. Go ahead and click on loop since I want it to play over and over, but if you don't want it to loop, you can leave this unchecked. And there we go, now we have a texture with that video imprinted onto it. There's a couple negatives as far as this type of movie playing on the widgets go. If we change the location of the MP4 on our computer, so let's say it's no longer inside of this videos folder and we move it somewhere else, we're going to run into some serious issues when Unreal Engine reaches out and tries to get that information. Also using this type of video on a widget does take up significantly more resources than the second method that we're going to use, but this one's easier so we're going to go ahead and just show this real quick. So let's open up our widget again, since I accidentally closed it. And I'm gonna minimize it since this is the only way that I've really gotten this to work. If I add an image onto our hierarchy, 
uh, as a component. I can't seem to set the image to the texture, but if we go in here and we just drag the texture onto our background, it goes ahead and sets it up nicely right here. And that's great. So now we have our main menu widget background set up as our intro video, but if we go to play, we'll see that it doesn't play. It just kind of sits there, and since we have a place down 2D, we'll hear some music. <laughs> All right. So how do we go ahead and play that texture? Well, it's pretty easy. What we need to do is go into our variables and add a media player variable. So we're going to add media player. Go ahead and change the type from Boolean to a media player. Compile and save. And after we compile and save, we'll just have to set the default value to whatever um, media player we want to use for this. And we're going to use the MP intro since that right now has our video loaded. And after that, we're going to go to event construct, which is the equivalent to event begin play for widgets. And we're going to drag our media player, get that variable, and with that variable, we are going to open a source and connect those pins there. What source are we going to open? Well, we're going to open up the actual file media source for our MP4. There we go. So if we play at this point, we'll see that the video begins playing along with the annoying background music. We have it set to looping so that once it's done, it'll begin playing again from the beginning. The music is obnoxiously loud in my headphones. Hopefully you don't have to deal with that. Okay, but like I said, this method of playing movies and this type of animation playing in the background is pretty limited, and it's resource intensive, since we have multiple things going on. A media player, we have a file media source, we have all these variables firing when event begin play, uh, we have to open that source for the media player, and also, uh, it is limiting in the sense that if we wanted some transparency on this video, it's very difficult to get that going. So the second method that we're going to use is similar to how we do billboards in the engine. And this is done with textures and materials. And you'll notice that any image in a widget under the brush tab, if you go and you try to choose an image, you'll see some materials there, which implies that you can use materials as your brush, which is true. You just have to have the material set in a specific way, and we're going to go ahead and cover that right now. We'll go ahead and make that material, and to make that material and to have it animated, we'll need something like this. As you can see, this is something that is similar to a sprite sheet. It's one texture that's broken into sections of the same object slightly changing over a period of time. And this sprite sheet is broken into six columns and six rows you can see six across and six down. So we have 36 different images that can be scrolled upon with something called a flip book to create a convincing animation. And I'm gonna use this image at first, the texture, and then I'll show you a image that I just found online on Google that, that we can go ahead and use to have an animation occur. So let's go ahead and create a material out of this. We'll go ahead and right click on it, create material, and I'm just gonna call it N, Anim, since it's going to be an animated material. Open that up and we have just the basics of what we'll need. I mentioned earlier that we'll need to do some specific things in order to get this to work on our widget since we can't just add it right now. The first thing that we'll need to do is go to our material domain and there's a few different options here. The one that we're going to use is user interface and that way we can use it for our UMG. We'll go ahead and just plug this right into our final color and apply. And you'll notice that the engine doesn't know what to do with our tiled texture yet. We haven't really told it what to do, so it just thinks that it's an image that looks weird like this. Luckily, there's a built-in material function called a flipbook, and we can right-click and just type in flipbook under miscellaneous and have that right there on the material graph. What this flipbook tells the engine to do is, hey, go ahead and zoom in to this one specific section of this tile texture and scroll along the x-axis. And then once you're done there, go to the y-axis, down one, and scroll along the x-axis again. Do that over and over until the image is completed, and then restart. But we do have to specify the number of rows and number of columns. 
So the number of columns we have is 6, the number of rows we have is 6. Pretty easy, so we can use the same constant for that. We'll just set the value to 6 and tell it, hey, we have 6 columns and 6 rows. Next, we'll need to get our texture coordinates. And to do that, just type in TEX coordinates. And we'll plug that right into the UVs, telling it to utilize the texture coordinates. And for our flipbook, don't forget to plug in the UVs into the UVs of our texture sample. That way we start getting this animation. And right away we can see that our flipbook is working properly. Instead of it showing the entire static image from our texture sample, it's scrolling through all of those sectioned off components. And there's one last thing we need to do, which is change the frame rate of the scrolling from 30 frames a second, which is game time, to 24 seconds, which is our animation time. In order to do that, we just need to get our time, our game time, and we'll go ahead and multiply that by an amount. We'll plug that right into animation phases, and the amount that we need to go ahead and multiply it by is not six. We actually need to multiply it by a smaller number, a smaller number than one, which is 80%. And 80% of 30 is going to bring you to 24 frames per second. Now we have a slightly slower animation being played. At this point, if we wanted to see this animation on our widget, we can go ahead and open up our widget again, select our image, and go to M and M. Plug that in. And I'm just going to do one quick thing here. I don't want the image to be parented to the background blur because then we can't resize the image. Let's go ahead and anchor it to the middle and we can stretch it out from there. I am going to change the alignment to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that way it's exactly in the middle. But I am going to put this up near the canvas panel, not behind the background blur though. That way it is not in front of all of our uh, start game buttons and quick game buttons. Okay, so we do have a working animation on our widget, but I don't like this black background. Let's go ahead and get rid of that background, which is pretty easy. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is get a different texture. This texture doesn't have any transparency in it. The background is actually black, so there's nothing to subtract from, unless we just get rid of all the black in the image, which is not what we want to do since there's some good um, black inside of these explosions. So what we'll need to do is import another image that's tiled just like that, and I happen to have one in my downloads folder called Walking. And I just quickly got this on Google for demonstration purposes from the Castle Game Engine website. Uh, Castle Game Engine seems like a pretty interesting engine, but I mean, nothing really beats Unreal for me. Notice that this sprite sheet doesn't have a final section completed in the image that I imported into the engine. Uh, we can go ahead and open that up. I just added a copy of this last one into this bottom right. That way we don't have just a phase out of existence sort of animation. Uh, back in our material, we can change the texture if we click on texture sample and we'll go to texture walking. And before we go ahead and edit out the background, we need to actually update the number of rows and number of columns. And you can see pretty easily we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns and one, two, three, four rows. So we can go back here, duplicate our constant, plug that in here. We do have six columns, but we only have four rows. And now our flipbook will be scrolling properly. And this little hitch here that I have going on, just when he freezes for a moment, is because we have three of the same frames. This last one, this uh, very last one that I added, and the first one are all the same exact pose. So it makes him appear like he just stops in time for a second. That's totally fine. Obviously, you would want a better sprite sheet for this. Um, I just use what I got for free on Google, for example. So what we're going to do in order to mask out the background, like we were talking about earlier, is get our alpha, and we're going to do a 1 minus from that alpha. The alpha is everything that is not empty in our image. So 1 minus that is going to be everything that is empty. And we're going to subtract that from our regular alpha. So go ahead and plug that in. and. Now we can't plug that into the result node. That's because 
our type of material, blend mode, is set to opaque, which is just a flat type of material where every bit of it has to have some sort of color and no transparency. What we want is a masked blend mode. That way we can go ahead and mask out some part of the material. And the part that we're going to mask out is this subtract node. Let's go ahead and apply that. There we go, and it looks the same inside of the material, but if we go back to our widget, you'll notice that there's no black background around it. And if we start our game, we'll have the flipbook material animation playing correctly with the transparent background of our walking character. Now this second method of adding an animation to your widget or having an animated material inside of your widget is more difficult to create since you need to have this tiled sprite sheet in order to get it to work properly. I recommend having someone that has a decent understanding of Photoshop so that you can render out your animation and have each frame of that animation tiled using Photoshop. That way you'll have a smooth sprite sheet and you can go ahead and add it to your material and make sure that the number of rows and columns are correct and that your time's correct with the same frame rate that you did the animation. Remember that the default game time is 30 frames per second. And that's really it for adding basic videos to your widgets. Remember that the second method we went over is much more performant and difficult. The first method is very limited, but easy. You can take the second method to the extreme, where you can have multiple animated materials on your widgets at all time, popping in and out, coupled with the animations here on the bottom left part of the widget. That way you have some really incredibly stylized animations on your widgets. And all right, thank you so much for checking out the video. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm here to help you think like a game developer. So stick around, seriously stick around for more videos if you want to learn a little bit more about Unreal Engine 4.